Welcome to episode 74 of The Weekender. I'm Brandon Roberts along with Chris Bishop and all the way from Elko, Marcella Sign. How are you? Hi. I'm so excited I'm, that I'm here with you guys today. We're excited to have you. Um, for those of you that don't know, Marcella was the president not only once, but twice of Elko Association of Realtors. Three times. I forgot Three one. times. Wow, yes. that's fantastic. <laughs> How many members do you have up in Elko? We have a, about 155. 155 as of today. That's nice. Yeah, that's as of great. today. Yeah. So we thought it yeah. would really be cool to have you on and kind of talk a little bit about your market because you guys do really have a specialty marketplace up there in Elko and just kind of tell our viewers a little bit about what the market looks like, what your you know main industry is in the area and tell us about Elko. Okay. Well, Elko, as you know, is the most beautiful part of Nevada with our mountains and stuff. So I knew we you guys, I know you guys agree with that. <laughs> um, we have, I, we have, um, in our entire county, which I don't know if you know, this is the fourth largest in the nation. Um, and we have 50,000 people in our county. Wow. So, yeah. So we have the majority though live in Elko in our county, live in Elko and Spring Creek. And in our market total today, active listings in those, both those two together, we have 15 active listings, which is great because when I talked to Chris, we had three last time, what, a couple of weeks ago, we talked to Chris, I think there was three. So we have 15 wow. today. We're super excited about that. Um, what else? Our mining, our active, our whole market is about mining, mining and ranching and everything that stems around mining, um, all of the subcontractors and uh, that's, I don't know what you call those. It's pretty amazing that you could literally go out and view all the available listings and say, I've, I've, I've looked at all the properties for you. Twice today. Twice today. Okay, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Let me just FaceTime you and all these listings. Yeah. Like, so definitely you were telling can us do before that. the show that on average your market has about 120, 130 listings in a traditional marketplace and then to only have, you said three last week. It's good to know your inventory went up to 15. What's 15. it like selling houses with only 15 homes on the market? What? Tell us some of the oh, things you're dealing with. Well, it's so hard. I'm I'm sure it's just the same for you guys. Multiple offers, cash 20, 30,000 over the market, um, even appraisal values. You know, people are just paying cash to get those houses. We have a lot of people that are just saying, posting on Facebook saying, this is what my buyer needs. Contact this, the agent and get things under contract before they're on the market. I, I don't, you know, are you guys having that same kind of thing? I think we have a lot of people that are, you know, definitely talking to their clients more about, you know, hey, I, I have a buyer that's looking for what you've got. Would you sell your home? But no, we don't have the, you know, the agents doing it with each other. But who knows? Our inventory is getting worse and worse. Yeah. Not as bad as yours. It's, yeah. Well, I, like an example that we just had, I have a buyer who we're all friends with the seller. So my buyer told the seller where we need a house, but their house wasn't on the market. And he said, okay, I'll just pay a commission to you all. This is what I want. Let's write it up. Wow. I didn't even have to show the house. It was just that quick and under the contract. And that is happening a lot. We have a whole bunch. Um, our average sales price is in town is 330. And that's wow. rising every single day. So now what's yeah. crazy is in 06, when, when we had our lowest or 07, whatever it was, we had one of our lowest sales prices ever. You guys still had a really high average sales price, mm -hmm. which I thought was crazy. Yeah, that's that's like one of the benefits of living in Elko is because price. everything is based off gold. We didn't have that downturn like you had all the foreclosures and stuff. Elko never did experience that. I've been in real estate since 2001 and we've never had that. We're just a steady, steady stream, except for this year. And then now we're... Hey. Your market's you know, way been up good. There. I, I had an aunt uh, that lived up there. She did uh, loans, actually. You probably know her, Kathy Rixey. Um, oh, I love Kathy. <laughs> yeah, that's my aunt. So yeah. my aunt, a lot of years, she lives up in Washington now, but she made mm -hmm. a lot of money up there doing mortgages and stuff. Loved Elko. Um, I always thought the nicest place in Nevada, though, was Wendover. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> okay, we're second. Second to Wendover, for yeah, sure. <laughs> little border town, if you don't know where that is, because um, it's, the closest, it. it's the closest place to Salt Lake to go gamble. So yes, that's right. where that is. But it's uh, lots of there's lots of good concerts there. We go there all the time when you could have a concert. Yeah, that's yeah. We go there a lot for concerts. 
are fun. So you do a lot of uh, uh, volunteer with the leadership um, in as the obviously being the president three times, but you also do a lot with the state leadership. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm the past dean this year. So that's super exciting to watch Stephanie um, be the dean this year. It's kind of a redo with a do over from last year. We all got to go back since my year was 2019. 2019. So it's yeah. that's like uh, four sessions a year. I got to do it in 2013, and it was a, a big deal for me right before I was going in as president of Women's Council. I think it helped me a lot with setting me up for leadership and stuff. So I think it's a great, great program. Chris still hasn't done it. I, I actually haven't. You know, it just never seemed like the right time for me. And I've heard so many of my friends that have gone through it and just loved it. And uh, I'm just curious, though, you know, which class was the best leadership class? What do you think? <laughs> 2013. That's so, uh, wait a minute. Two, 2012 is my class. And then, but 2019, I think, would be better year what i don't know tom what she, are you thinking she she's torn between between being the dean of a great group and in a great group so i get mm -hmm. it hey so it so for those that don't know we got a lot of viewers that are our members that have maybe never heard of the leadership class tell us what what it's all about so you leadership um it's it's all about learning more about yourself really and about how to um interact with different different people and different personalities and learn more about speaking and which I obviously didn't learn very um I didn't take a lot of what I learned I think with that but you learn so those but what I really loved <laughs> no, <laughs> shut up. they were but really like what I really my favorite thing about leadership is the not just learning so much more about yourself but like learning different personalities and how you learn to deal with those personalities when they're not your best personality type and then also the oh my the the friendships that you make yeah. through both those programs i mean leadership through all four of those you make friends that you, forever they're your friends forever yeah i loved it, it don't you think so brandon connects you with the whole state um you don't because you get wrapped up in your market but when you get to spend that much time with people across the state it just changes the whole dynamic of everything and i think it's a wonderful program because i know you mentioned that tom went through it you were dean when tom went through it um, I well, was a trustee when Tom went through it. Yeah, so I just want you to know you were probably the best dean in the world because I seen the most change from that guy through leadership. Yeah, he did a great you job. You know what? Yeah, not going to lie. When I first met Tom, I, I looked at him and thought he's a lot like my dad, but he... Um, <laughs> he probably could be almost. The, you know, he is old like, enough. No. That's my dad's shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he... Tom actually in the third program became a totally different person. Like it was just like this whole thing happened to him in the third program that was just, he made me cry. It was amazing to see the difference in him. He makes us cry yeah. every day. It was a great program for him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I don't have to work with him every day. So. <laughs> no, we, we love Tom. We do. So. <laughs> and we love his shirts more. And that's what, you know, we're, we're thankful for our sponsor uh, as always Tom shirt. <laughs> yeah. So, which, so I'm curious to know, just because, you know, with the market as, as hot as it is up in Elko and dealing with the fact that you are kind of off to your own in the state and what are your plans, you know, as far as generating listings up there? I mean, what do you do? Is it past clients? Is it door knocking? I mean, uh, other than Facebook and your friends like like you had, what, what's your plans for getting more listings? Um, I think Elko is so small that your 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 sphere of influence is huge here. And so referral base is really where it's at in Elko. Um, and that, I, I think that social media has a play in that, but I really think that Elko is so tiny that it really is just a sphere of influence. I know that a lot of people are, you know, we have a lot of new agents. Um, I think that we've had probably 30 new agents in the last year and a half. Um, and they're doing a lot of the cold calling, calling um, expireds, which we don't have any expired. So you, that, you know, if that's your plan, you're, you need to think something else, <laughs> but, <on> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just tough. I, I just think, you know, door, I don't know, door knocking is not the thing to do. I don't think, um, it's just really your sphere of influence. So I think social media has a lot to, to play, it, you know, making sure that you're out there. It does have to be a little strange though, to be, you know, 15 properties on the market 
and you're an agent that puts one on and like, let's say that you don't present it very well or you don't price it very well. I mean, you've got to get heckled by a lot of agents because everyone is so close together. Um, I would imagine yeah. you guys pretty much talk to your other agents pretty pretty often, right? Yeah, yeah. I think what what's really, really unique about Elko is we're all pretty close knit. Um, and if there's something, you know, we notice something's wrong or whatever, we we pick up the phone and call, and which I like that. I like because you have to work with them every day. Where you guys have so many agents, you may see one agent and never ever talk to them again. And with us, we have 150 and you know you're going to do a deal with that other agent especially you know the top percentages we're going to do deals together every day so sure. we need to be friends i'm not sure our cell phones we... work down here <laughs> <laughs> really you need to work on that right. when you're president next year make that a goal <laughs> hey so let's let's talk about that for a second because you've been local president of an association three times and Brandon is going in as a first time uh, association president here in Las Vegas. What advice do you have for him? What, what would you, what good, good things would you tell him? Uh, I, I think that the biggest thing is communicate with your members. Like, like if after your board meeting, you know, and you guys have a policy meeting and you change your policies that needs to go out to your members, not just in an email. Um, but it needs to be personal, like a video or something so that everyone knows and feels part of it and not try to figure out all oh, the, you know, the forms changed and they're figuring it out because they read it. They communicate with them. That's the biggest thing. Good advice. Wow. Let everyone know. Well, that's good advice. <laughs> so. Yeah. Anything you want to ask us about us? <laughs> um, well, tell me about your market. I want to hear about your market. Oh, well, you know, it's on fire, but we're running out of fuel. That's the way we keep talking about it down here. But what do we have? We have like under 2,500 listings, um, wow. everything 70% selling in under 30 days, just like you. I mean, it's a hot, hot mm -hmm. market. Um, things don't stay on very often. We still have a group of people that overpriced their home. We still have a group of properties that just aren't very well presented. But all in all, it's it's a very fast paced market. Yeah, it's good. So. That's and a good you're market. right. You know, we have all those members out there that are learning for the first time how to pick up business. And it's so cool how the similarities between having a very small market and a large market. I mean, you have the same opportunity. I mean, you know, you average it out. You're really dealing with the same ratio as we are, just much smaller. Yeah. In a way smaller basis. But yeah, definitely. This is usually the, you know, 10 to 15 percent that do all of the business. Um, in our town and then we have our just like you guys, you know, the ones that you do one deal a year and We do have those two. And we got a we got a lot of agents coming in every month still too. Yeah Joining the board and getting their license. So 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 I, and I gotta ask this because I I've been a local president and the biggest thing you have is Orientations for new members and so we get a orientation class that has 300 members in it I mean you oh, get an orientation oh. class that has what two? Do you just take them out? And <laughs> no, so that are available we... and have <laughs> I mean, how does it work? We do that totally different than you guys. So instead of us doing it every month or every week, like you guys do it, we do it once every six months. It's on the third oh, April of every, every third day. April. It is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, every six months. And so we get, you know, all of those that are in there on that six months. That makes so, sense. So that we can have it worth more, you know, it's wild, worthwhile to do it instead of just one or two. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's probably been pretty cool for you guys that CE has been online for, for the last year because that's been one of your biggest things is actually bringing in instructors. And I know you guys have done that many times for your members and stuff. So how has that been? Do you think that you've gotten better classes and better systems set up because of it? Yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier. I think that um, I see the downfalls in it, people not paying attention and that kind of stuff, which I, I mean, I think everywhere is seeing that. But it has been great to be able to bring in classes yeah. um, that we would never have been able to bring in before, just because you know, and great speakers and stuff because of being on Zoom. I love it. Was, uh, we were in a class, the not a class, but a, a leadership, not your leadership, a different leadership group, and yeah. uh, they were talking about classes, you know, CE classes, and the instructors getting upset with students that are doing other things and not, you know, being cognizant in the class. And there was a a guy that was going through a drive through at Taco Bell and his car oh. phone went off of mute while he's ordering his food. So the class of, you know, 50, 60 people is listening to this guy order food and 
there's been other people that are laying in bed and not really dressed professionally on, you know, yeah. you, you can read into the lines on that one, but um, mm -hmm. just the weird things that have happened. So I, I can't wait to get some more of those stories and, and hear about it. Hopefully they're recording. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had one where the girl, and I mean, this wasn't really bad, but she was just brushing her dog, you know, petting her dog and stuff. My phone keeps going off because we're having a national weather service emergency warning. Oh, high right winds. now. Yeah. High so winds. it's going, it's, I don't know how to turn that off. It just keeps on going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. High winds and super cold. It's going to, we're getting um, heavy snow. It's supposed to snow really hard. Well, Hey, we really, nope. we really appreciate you being on the show and sharing your, I'm uh, so excited. <laughs> Thank you guys for asking me. I'm excited that you asked me to come do this. It's fun. We definitely value you and thank you for your service, not only to Elko, but also to the state of Nevada Realtors. We, we appreciate you and thank all you. that you do. Thanks so much. Thank you guys. Now yeah, this was a lot of fun. <laughs>